candle enthusiast. An opiate vapor, dewy, dim, exhales from out her golden rim, and softly dripping drop by drop upon the quiet mountain top. O oh, lady bright, can it be right this window open to the night? And at midnight, the time is soon. We stand beneath the mystic moon. It's here, people. It's here. Early morning on a Sunday, heading to Yankee Candle for a very special candle. I found it. I found it. There we go. All right, now I'm ready. Whoa. I made a whole lot of phone calls the past couple weeks. I was able to track down a candle that's important for the 2020 Yankee Candle Halloween season. The candle that I'm speaking of is of course the yet to be announced, the highly secretive Yankee Candle Mystic Moon. But there's some stipulations. The stipulations are there might be a problem with the candle. The candle's coming from an outlet. It might be a mispour. It might have other physical issues. My concern is if it smells like it should, I don't care really what it looks like. I don't even care if the label is all messed up and curled up and, and ripped off. I just want to know what this candle smells like. This is going to be a real uh, turn of the tables. Maybe that's not the right phrase, but it's definitely going to lift a few heads. Is that a phrase? I don't know. This is starting to look very familiar now. I have been here. This was actually where I picked up Witch's Brew in 2018 before its release. Uh, 2018 was the first year it was released in the 22 ounce jar, at least the first year in almost two decades. If you're wondering why my iPhone or Siri has a British accent, I said it that way because I thought it made her sound like Mary Poppins. Maybe that's more weird than me driving two hours and 45 minutes to get a candle and being nervous about it. There's lines to get into every store. Look at this, can you see the lines? All right, so I have all eight candles lined up, and there's definitely some issues. Looks like there's five that are completely black. And then there's three that are a deep, dark sapphire color, which is not the color I was expecting to see. From my research, it was supposed to be a dark teal seafoam color. Very dark teal. This is very much blue. I thought maybe, maybe that I would be smelling one, possibly two variances, but I'm counting one, two, three, four different variances within eight candles. These two candles seem to have this kind of a church steeple, chapel incense, frankincense, myrrh, firewood, cedar, smoky, ashy, and there are signs of patchouli in these two right here. But over here, 
has more of this saline, briny quality. Salty is what I mean. But this strangely has a note of apple. Could Mystic Moon be a mixture of smoke, incense, and apple? It's possible, right? And this guy over here, you know, is gonna share qualities of this two, these two groupings, but I'm getting a big black licorice, uh, like, like Happy Halloween, the retired candle. Could this be some kind of fusion of Happy Halloween, Witch's Brew, and Haunted Hollow? This is crazy. I don't know which one is the most accurate because believe it or not, all of these could certainly work. They're very uh, serviceable if you ask me. So I think the best thing to do is to get back to the studio where I can lay out all eight of these candles side by side, break every one down, each one, one at a time, and then give you my final conclusion to uh, my best guess of what Mystic Moon's aromatic profile is gonna be for Yankee Candle Halloween 2020, even though the wax color might be off quite a bit. All right, folks, I'm back here in the studio and I have all eight Mystic Moons spread out on the table. The goal here is to go through each candle one by one, take notes, and then I'm gonna cross-reference all of my notes and give my best educated guess of what I think Mystic Moon is gonna smell like. And what I've done here is I put a sticker on the back of each candle. This way I won't have any mishaps. I won't mix any up. Are we ready? Mystic moon number one so the first thing that's jumping out to me is that this has quite a bit of musk to it so what kind of musk am i smelling well this is uh something really thick heavy and, and warm warm is the the word i always gravitate towards when i smell amber gris or amber but there's something else here that is making me think high viscosity, thick, rich, syrupy, drippy, molasses. Here we go. There is spice here. I'm gonna say cinnamon. And I have to say, I'm smelling something that's confirming what I was getting at the outlet. And that is apple apple skin to be very specific if you're out on the apple farm and they're making apple cider and they're macerating all of the skins the seeds the stems all of the juice everything the solids of the apple this is called apple must licorice i'm gonna say licorice roots i'm going to say root beer and sarsaparilla thai basil probably the most out of all of the varieties has this licorice aroma. Oh, this has so much more of a foresty thing happening. A tree chopped down Paul Bunyan style and then thrown into the wood chipper. Doesn't smell like sawdust. This smells so alive. The wood smells moist. This isn't a dead tree laying on the forest floor. It peeled off a piece of bark or you just snapped off a twig of a living tree. I'm gonna say birch slash cedar. What I gotta do is adjust my nose. I don't have uh, a cup of coffee right here with me at the moment. Cappuccino candle uh, by Yankee Candle. I was smelling incense before. Something that's coming to my mind on this one is myrrh. We know it mainly when it's partnered with frankincense. It's a resin, but on its own, myrrh is deep, it's dusty, it's earthy, but there is a sweet side to it. I mean, the tons of clove on that one. It's not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. Uh, or even something like um, a sea salt. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So there are fruit notes, there are spices, there are herbal notes, there are florals, there are a lot of, let's say, woodsy notes, musky notes, and then some. This has been quite the challenge. Some of these 
uh, I didn't even really need to focus on that much. So I made a list of my fragrance notes, my best educated guess from what I have, what I've smelled, cross-referencing everything. It's gonna be a mixture of my fragrance notes and my guess as to the fragrance notes Yankee's going to use. So let me go over this and tell you what my best educated guess of what Mystic Moon is gonna smell like. Here we go, top note, citrus. Citrus, yes, I'm going with orange, but it could just as easily be, Yankee could say mandarin, they could say lemon. Cinnamon, spice, yes, oh man. What would you know autumn be without cinnamon? And it's really the first spice that comes through in this candle. Basil, now this was a tough one because I was smelling licorice at the outlet. I was smelling licorice all throughout this session with all these candles. But I said, I don't know if Yankee is going to put licorice in this candle and I don't think they're gonna put it in the fragrance notes. So I had to look for other possibilities. What else smells like licorice? Basil does. Also uh, fennel, aniseed, star anise. So uh, I went with basil. Tobacco flower, yeah, there is a sweet floral thing happening in this candle, and if we've ever smelled tobacco flower, actual tobacco, been inside of a, a cigar humidor, or smelled uh, the inside of a cigar, um, it's a very sweet vanilla, vanillin uh, experience. Here's the thing, in the United States, there's still that stigma using the word tobacco. Uh, a lot of people don't want tobacco in the fragrance notes because association with health hazards and stuff like that. But Yankee Candle International, they use tobacco flower as a descriptor all the time in their candles. In fact, they have a candle called tobacco flower. I also chose a lily that's very vague because there's a lot of different varieties of lily. Uh, Stargazer lily, a lily of the valley. There's so many lilies. Um, uh, there's more florals, I think, here at play. Uh, you know, they might say hyacinth, they might say jasmine, they might say geranium for all I know. I don't know because um, it's really not something I can distinguish uh, within this mod podge of a lot of ingredients. Min notes, clove. Yes, clove, big, big, big clove. Uh, bay leaf, think about being outdoors and not so much the forested area of the outdoors and not so much the pumpkin patch. Bay leaf will uh, make you think of more of a, a wet, moist climate. Maybe it takes us closer to Camp Crystal Lake being by the water. Clary sage, kind of the same thing there. There's a high tinge smell to Clary sage that I think I was picking up on. The coniferous trees. Uh, I picked fir needle and I picked a juniper berry. So think of like pine cone, uh, but not too sweet. White pepper, white pepper, yes, white pepper. I don't think Yankee Candle will say white pepper, but I think they will say black pepper. Base notes, myrrh, oh man, dark, inky, thick, rich, woody, dusty, of the earth, yes, and that definitely sets a tone. It sets the stage for something dark, but let's keep going. Cedar wood, yeah. You know, I was smelling bark, I was smelling that fresh, twig broken right off the tree. It's not dried out. This is not firewood. If anything, this tree still smells like it has life into it. Patchouli. Yes. Oh, wait, patchouli people. I know who you are. And if you don't like patchouli, I, I hear you. I got it. It's balanced. It's in there. You may pick it up. You may not, but it works because it's going to give us an earthy outdoors. You know, this is called Mystic Moon, right? We're not looking at this moon through the window. We're outside. We're gonna need some organic material to create this illusion. And patchouli is, is one of the greatest tools for doing just that. Vetiver, like, like hay bales or hay ride or corn husk or corn stalks, you know, corn maize. And that's kind of what I was getting, this corn uh, corn stalk, sweet, but still very much dead and decaying dried uh, material vegetation outside. These base notes really setting a tone for a Halloween candle here. Amber, it has a lot of some soapy qualities. But here's the thing, you know, uh, when we smell Irish Spring, Amber, we think of, oh, meadows, fresh cut grass, clover and dandelions and all those things, right? So uh, we're playing a little bit of mind association game and musk. 
that's the last one. Why Musk? Why did I just write Musk? A lot of the things that I said were musky. Why write Musk? Well, Yankee Candle does that all the time. They'll just throw in Musk, and I think this is a scenario where they might just do that. But the bottom line is not my list. It's not about the fragrance notes that I came up with. What is this candle? What am I feeling? Well, this uh, mystic moon is like being lost in the dark in the middle of the forest by the lake. You can't see a single thing. The only illumination is coming from that moon above our head and not being able to see what's around you. You can imagine the mystery, that aromatic mystery of everything around you. When a lot of people smell this candle, I'll bet that they're gonna be like, I have no idea what this smells like. Like, what, what is this? What is this? Because it's hard to really wrap your mind around. But isn't this the whole idea? This dark, mystical night outside. It will set a tone, it will set the stage for something haunting, foreboding, organic, and earthy, and the spice there to really seal the deal that it is autumn, it is harvest time. Among the season of the witches, possibly a Halloween night, and we lost our way home, that moon is what's gonna guide us safely, hopefully, uh, all the way back home. Mystic Moon by Yankee Candle. I will be buying uh, Mystic Moon at South Deerfield, home of the Yankee Candle Village flagship store for their Halloween preview on August 29th, even though I have eight Mystic Moons in front of me. I'll figure out what to do with these at a later time because we have a lot more to talk about. What about other fragrances? What will be coming back? What will not be coming back? What about accessories? What about the Boney Bunch? Let's dip into that right now. Let's start off with the bad news. Cue the funeral march. Candles sense that will not be returning for Yankee Candle Halloween 2020. I'm sorry in advance, folks. Happy Halloween will not be making an appearance this year. Ah, candy corn, the Yankee Candle classic. It's not gonna happen, people. It's not gonna happen. I wish I could make it happen. And for those of you who were super optimistic to see Ghostly Treats, the one-time release 2014 fragrance, uh, the gooey uh, marshmallow treat, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's not. It's not gonna happen. Trick or Treat from 2019 or any other form, uh, the 2019 release or the Swirl Candle or the, the ancient 1990s, early 2000s version of Trick or Treat will not be here in the US, but it will be in the, the UK for the European crowd. Forbidden Apple, nope. Uh, so stock up on Granny Smith and pick up a Macintosh. They have been around for ages and for good reason. Uh, the Halloween, the very early black band Yankee candle, apothecary jar, jack-o'-lantern candle, uh, the ever elusive fragrance that uh, everyone wants to get their hands on. Uh, yeah, uh, that's not coming back, no. Um, but that's not really a, a big surprise. Now this one might hurt, so make sure you have a seat, take a couple deep breaths. It was voted the number one most wanted candle to come back for Yankee Candle Halloween on my Instagram page, but we will not be seeing it. It is Haunted Hollow, the 2017 release. It was only released in 2017. I was really hoping to have it pop up in a 22 ounce house warmer jar, apothecary jar. I even made a phony, uh, my own kind of fan fiction label for it. But sadly, Yankee Candle was not listening. Maybe next year, Yankee, maybe next year. Here's a list of possible maybes. Autumn Dusk, Autumn Dusk was never a Halloween candle. It was an online exclusive released in 2017, both in the US, but also as a USA exclusive in Europe on QVC. To me, uh, the, even just the label looks super spooky and haunting. It, 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 everything about it, including the aromatic profile, was always Halloween to me. It won't be in retail, but I think there's hope that it will pop up in outlets because it did in previous years. Sweet Seduction. Now, Sweet Seduction should be on the not returning list, but a part of me hesitated for a second. 
and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Cider Web. Cider Web is Yankee Candles Apple Cider Fragrance. Uh, it's a great find because apple cider isn't uh, a candle that was readily available for a very long time. This candle and Boonilla, which is very friendly, very Halloween appropriate candle, they, these two do pop up on Yankee Candle retail shelves during the Halloween preview and for the Halloween season. There's no reason to believe that maybe 2020 we won't be seeing them again because like I said, they do pop up quite frequently. Now, not in retail but will be available, Black Magic. Now, I do not know if Black Magic, uh, which was originally released in 2015, uh, I don't know if there's a 2020 pour. However, I've been to several Yankee Candle outlets in three different states, and I've seen Black Magic all over the place. So that's all good and dandy, but what candles will be returning? for 2020. Let's take a look at that. These slides are of a Yankees 2020 Halloween catalog. So there's no denying what we're about to see in these slides because uh, it's 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 printed right there before us. Well, they're actually digital copies, but you know what I mean. It's there in black and white. There's no denying. Well, it's in color, but you know what I mean. One that I already announced on my last spoiler alert sneak peek video, Haunted Hayride. Uh, the 2019 last year's fragrance will be returning to the U.S. this year. It's a beautiful candle. It's a striking label. Those of you who are big fans of Haunted Hayride, good reason to be excited. Just don't rub and sniff the screen. That's not going to work. Here's another picture of Haunted Hayride. And this one, uh-oh, wait a minute minute. Hold on now. Witches Brew, Witches Brew is coming back for 2020. They cannot take it down. They cannot. They won't. And those of us who love Witches Brew will never let go. Will never let go. The European crowd, I apologize for my celebratory, my, uh, my, my jovial behavior right now because it's sad, but it's most likely the truth you will not be getting witch's brew. It's just, it's just not gonna, they're not making it. They don't do it. I don't know why. I wish I could help. A lot of you reached out like I could help. I can't help. I have no influence on Yankee Candle. I apologize. Three years in a row that we will see uh, Witcher's Brew with this label right here. And just for fun, uh, here's uh, the first release of Witch's Brew. I thought maybe, just possibly, I'd break this out as a treat for this video here. Because after acquiring this candle, I now own every witch's brew, every vessel of every year it's ever been released. This was uh, kind of a dorky moment for me, but exciting nonetheless which means there will be yet another Witch's Brew retrospective coming from the candle enthusiast this year. Uh, and it'll highlight every look uh, Witch's Brew has ever had throughout the years, almost 30 years. In my last video, I talked about a candle called Pumpkin Patch and Pumpkin Patch has been released in Europe. The thing is, it's not called Pumpkin Patch here in the US. A lot of you may know this by now. It's going to be called Jack-O-Lantern. It's got a slightly different label. We do not see a pumpkin patch in the background. It looks like a park in autumn, tons of foliage. We see street lamps uh, with the bokeh and the soft orbs of light in the background, the tall trees. But we do still get those two jack-o'-lanterns that we saw on the European label. And as you can see there on the bottom, we got some interesting formats. It looks like a 12 ounce single wick soft vegetable-based wax formatting of Jack O'Lantern. This is what's really cool. Look at that little cauldron. We are going to be seeing Jack O'Lantern and Mystic Moon in that little ceramic cauldron. Now you're probably saying, why are you so excited about this? I love wax and ceramic. Ceramic holds heat very well. Why do you think we make mugs of for coffee and tea out of ceramic. 
it holds heat and that's gonna create a very easy, smooth, even burn. And although it's most likely going to be a very small candle, like eight or 10 ounces of wax, it's still beautiful nonetheless. You actually get to keep the cauldron afterwards and use it for something creative. For you bony people, you gotta have your bony bunch. There's several here, but uh, it looks like there's gonna be several uh, exclusive pieces sold online. And this year's theme seems to be a mental ward or an insane asylum, whatever's most politically correct, I don't know. Dr. Screamy, tea light candle holder, bonies to the rescue, on a roll, a bony character, in a wheelchair, the good doctor. The good doctor has, uh, well, he looks a little bit insane. He looks a little bit out of his gourd, to be honest with you. He seems to be holding a two-wick tumbler in his pants. The good news is, if you don't want to put a candle in his pants, you can put candy, because it's listed as also a candy dish. Candy right out of his pants. All comfy cozy, we have pajamin, votive tea light candle holder, hair raising fun, wax melt warmer, hide and shriek taper candle holder, make them laugh. He is a tea light candle holder. Boney's little champion. Oh. All smiles, very cool. Four heads, one body, whole lot of fun. And till death do us part tea light candle holder. You gotta have some romance on Halloween. Look at the votives in all of these bony bunch. They're very orange. Could this mean, possibly, maybe, do you see where I'm going with this? Before I even say it, a large candle holder, a shade, and a votive holder as well. But look what's on them. Candy corn. Does that mean there's a little secret? Is there something that they're not quite telling us? Orange wax, very candy corn, sweet seduction-esque tea lights in the bony bunch, and candy corns on these accessories and no candy corn fragrance? To top it off, look at the headline, all treats, no tricks. And it says, don't forget the candy or these enticing year round fragrances. And there's nothing trick or treat candy-esque about Midsummer's Night. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, the reason why I put sweet seduction on the possibly maybe list is that there might be some form of candy corn sweet seduction this year. We'll see. Very interesting, especially because the tagline this year is treat yourself to Halloween fun. So those are a couple, a few of the accessories. A little bit of the Bony Bunch. There's going to be, like I said, online exclusives. So the next time you will be seeing me, I will be in Sound Deerfield, home of the Yankee Candle Village flagship store, celebrating their 2020 Halloween, not party, but a preview, but I will be there nonetheless, ready to share my experience, document the whole village decorated for Halloween with all of the Halloween products. I will be hosting a live stream showing you uh, as soon as the doors open all of the new products. So on Saturday, make sure you tune in because I'm gonna have everything in a shopping cart, everything that they're selling that is promoting Halloween. I'm gonna have it and I'm gonna share it. I'm gonna show it and maybe I'm gonna smell it. So uh, please join in and subscribe if you haven't. And I wanna thank you folks for joining me and maybe hopefully that you took a little bit of my enthusiasm and it got you excited for the big day, August 29th. So I will be seeing you soon, but until the... Spooky sounds coming from outside. Mystic moons in the sky, witches in the disguise. I don't, I got nothing. We'll see you folks real soon. Happy hauntings. Be good. Will you?